Green building, also known as green construction or sustainable building, refers to both a structure and the application of processes that are environmentally responsible and resource efficient throughout a building's life cycle, from planning to design, construction, operation, maintenance, renovation, and demolition. This requires close cooperation of the contractor, the architects, the engineers, and the client at all project stages. The green building practice expands and complements the classical building design concerns of economy, utility, durability, and comfort. Leadership in Energy and Environmental Design lead is a set of rating systems for the design, construction, operation, and maintenance of green buildings which was developed by the U.S. Green Building Council. Another certificate system that confirms the sustainability of buildings is the British BREEAM Building Research Establishment Environmental Assessment Method for buildings and large-scale developments. Currently, World Green Building Council is conducting research on the effects of green buildings on the health and productivity of their users and is working with World Bank to promote green buildings in emerging markets through EDGE Excellence in Design for Greater Efficiencies Market Transformation Program and Certification. There are also other tools such as Green Star in Australia and the Green Building Index GBI, predominantly used in Malaysia. Building Information Modeling BIM, is a process involving the generation and management of digital representations of physical and functional characteristics of places. Building information models BIMs, are files often but not always in proprietary formats and containing proprietary data which can be extracted, exchanged or networked to support decision making regarding a building or other built asset. Current BIM software is used by individuals, businesses and government agencies who plan, design, construct, operate and maintain diverse physical infrastructures, such as water, refuse, electricity, gas, communication utilities, roads, railways, bridges, ports and tunnels. Although new technologies are constantly being developed to complement current practices in creating greener structures, the common objective of green buildings is to reduce the overall impact of the built environment on human health and the natural environment by efficiently using energy, water, and other resources, protecting occupant health and improving employee productivity, see healthy building. Reducing waste, pollution and environmental degradation A similar concept as natural building, which is usually on a smaller scale and tends to focus on the use of natural materials that are available locally. Other related topics include sustainable design and green architecture. Sustainability may be defined as meeting the needs of present generations without compromising the ability of future generations to meet their needs. Although some green building programs don't address the issue of retrofitting existing homes, others do, especially through public schemes for energy-efficient refurbishment. Green construction principles can easily be applied to retrofit work as well as new construction. A 2009 report by the U.S. General Services Administration found 12 sustainably designed buildings that cost less to operate and have excellent energy performance. In addition, occupants were overall more satisfied with the building than those in typical commercial buildings. These are eco-friendly buildings. Topic: Reducing environmental impact. Globally, buildings are responsible for a huge share of energy, electricity, water and materials consumption. The building sector has the greatest potential to deliver significant cuts in emissions at little or no cost. 
buildings account for 18% of global emissions today, or the equivalent of 9 billion tons of CO2 annually. If new technologies in construction are not adopted during this time of rapid growth, emissions could double by 2050, according to the United Nations Environment Programme. Green building practices aim to reduce the environmental impact of building. Since construction almost always degrades a building site, not building at all is preferable to green building, in terms of reducing environmental impact. The second rule is that every building should be as small as possible. The third rule is not to contribute to sprawl, even if the most energy efficient, environmentally sound methods are used in design and construction. Buildings account for a large amount of land. According to the National Resources Inventory, approximately 107 million acres square kilometers of land in the United States are developed. The International Energy Agency released a publication that estimated that existing buildings are responsible for more than 40% of the world's total primary energy consumption and for 24% of global carbon dioxide emissions. Topic: <laughs> Goals of green building. The concept of sustainable development can be traced to the energy especially fossil oil crisis and environmental pollution concerns of the 1960s and 1970s. The Rachel Carson book, Silent Spring, published in 1962, is considered to be one of the first initial efforts to describe sustainable development as related to green building. The green building movement in the U.S. originated from the need and desire for more energy efficient and environmentally friendly construction practices. There are a number of motives for building green, including environmental, economic, and social benefits. However, modern sustainability initiatives call for an integrated and synergistic design to both new construction and in the retrofitting of existing structures. Also known as sustainable design, this approach integrates the building life cycle with each green practice employed with a design purpose to create a synergy among the practices used. Green building brings together a vast array of practices, techniques, and skills to reduce and ultimately eliminate the impacts of buildings on the environment and human health. It often emphasizes taking advantage of renewable resources, e.g., using sunlight through passive solar, active solar, and photovoltaic equipment, and using plants and trees through green roofs, rain gardens, and reduction of rainwater runoff. Many other techniques are used, such as using low-impact building materials or using packed gravel or permeable concrete instead of conventional concrete or asphalt to enhance replenishment of ground water. While the practices or technologies employed in green building are constantly evolving and may differ from region to region, fundamental principles persist from which the method is derived, siting and structure design efficiency, energy efficiency, water efficiency, materials efficiency, indoor environmental quality enhancement, operations and maintenance optimization and waste and toxics reduction. The essence of green building is an optimization of one or more of these principles. Also, with the proper synergistic design, individual green building technologies may work together to produce a greater cumulative effect. On the aesthetic side of green architecture or sustainable design is the philosophy of designing a building that is in harmony with the natural features and resources surrounding the site. There are several key steps in designing sustainable buildings. Specify green building materials from local sources, reduce loads, optimize systems, and generate on-site renewable energy.
Topic: Life cycle assessment. A life cycle assessment LCA can help avoid a narrow outlook on environmental, social and economic concerns by assessing a full range of impacts associated with all cradle to grave stages of a process, from extraction of raw materials through materials processing, manufacture, distribution, use, repair and maintenance, and disposal or recycling. Impacts taken into account include among others, embodied energy, global warming potential, resource use, air pollution, water pollution, and waste. In terms of green building, the last few years have seen a shift away from a prescriptive approach, which assumes that certain prescribed practices are better for the environment, toward the scientific evaluation of actual performance through LCA. Although LCA is widely recognized as the best way to evaluate the environmental impacts of buildings ISO 14040 provides a recognized LCA methodology, it is not yet a consistent requirement of green building rating systems and codes, despite the fact that embodied energy and other life cycle impacts are critical to the design of environmentally responsible buildings. In North America, LCA is rewarded to some extent in the Green Globes rating system, and is part of the new American national standard based on Green Globes, ANSI, GBI 012010, Green Building Protocol for Commercial Buildings. LCA is also included as a pilot credit in the LEED system, though a decision has not been made as to whether it will be incorporated fully into the next major revision. The state of California also included LCA as a voluntary measure in its 2010 draft Green Building Standards Code. Although LCA is often perceived as overly complex and time-consuming for regular use by design professionals, research organizations such as BRI in the UK and the Athena Sustainable Materials Institute in North America are working to make it more accessible. In the UK, the BRI Green Guide to Specifications offers ratings for 1,500 building materials based on LCA. Topic. Siting and structure design efficiency The foundation of any construction project is rooted in the concept and design stages. The concept stage, in fact, is one of the major steps in a project life cycle, as it has the largest impact on cost and performance. In designing environmentally optimal buildings, the objective is to minimize the total environmental impact associated with all life cycle stages of the building project. However, building as a process is not as streamlined as an industrial process, and varies from one building to the other, never repeating itself identically. In addition, buildings are much more complex products, composed of a multitude of materials and components each constituting various design variables to be decided at the design stage. A variation of every design variable may affect the environment during all the building's relevant life cycle stages. Topic. Energy efficiency Green buildings often include measures to reduce energy consumption, both the embodied energy required to extract, process, transport and install building materials and operating energy to provide services such as heating and power for equipment. As high-performance buildings use less operating energy, embodied energy has assumed much greater importance, and may make up as much as 30% of the overall life cycle energy consumption. 
Studies such as the USLCI database project show buildings built primarily with wood will have a lower embodied energy than those built primarily with brick, concrete, or steel. To reduce operating energy use, designers use details that reduce air leakage through the building envelope, the barrier between conditioned and unconditioned space. They also specify high-performance windows and extra insulation in walls, ceilings, and floors. Another strategy, passive solar building design, is often implemented in low-energy homes. Designers orient windows and walls and place awnings, porches, and trees to shade windows and roofs during the summer while maximizing solar gain in the winter. In addition, effective window placement daylighting can provide more natural light and lessen the need for electric lighting during the day. Solar water heating further reduces energy costs. On-site generation of renewable energy through solar power, wind power, hydro power, or biomass can significantly reduce the environmental impact of the building. Power generation is generally the most expensive feature to add to a building. Water efficiency Reducing water consumption and protecting water quality are key objectives in sustainable building. One critical issue of water consumption is that in many areas, the demands on the supplying aquifer exceed its ability to replenish itself. To the maximum extent feasible, facilities should increase their dependence on water that is collected, used, purified, and reused on site. The protection and conservation of water throughout the life of a building may be accomplished by designing for dual plumbing that recycles water in toilet flushing or by using water for washing of the cars. Waste water may be minimized by utilizing water conserving fixtures such as ultra low flush toilets and low flow shower heads. Bidets help eliminate the use of toilet paper, reducing sewer traffic and increasing possibilities of reusing water on site. Point of use water treatment and heating improves both water quality and energy efficiency while reducing the amount of water in circulation. The use of non-sewage and graywater for on-site use such as site irrigation will minimize demands on the local aquifer. Large commercial buildings with water and energy efficiency can qualify for an LEED certification. Philadelphia's Comcast Center is the tallest building in Philadelphia. It's also one of the tallest buildings in the USA that is LEED certified. Their environmental engineering consists of a hybrid central chilled water system which cools floor by floor with steam instead of water. Burns Mechanical set up the entire renovation of the 58-story, 1.4 million square foot skyscraper. Topic: <laughs> Materials efficiency. Building materials typically considered to be green include lumber from forests that have been certified to a third-party forest standard, rapidly renewable plant materials like bamboo and straw, dimension stone, recycled stone, recycled metal C, copper sustainability and recyclability, and other products that are non-toxic, reusable, renewable, and or recyclable. For concrete a high-performance or Roman self-healing concrete is available. The EPA Environmental Protection Agency also suggests using recycled industrial goods, such as coal combustion products, foundry sand, and demolition debris in construction projects. Energy-efficient building materials and appliances are promoted in the United States through energy rebate programs. Topic. Indoor environmental quality enhancement 
The Indoor Environmental Quality IEQ category in LEED standards, one of the five environmental categories, was created to provide comfort, well-being, and productivity of occupants. The LEED IEQ category addresses design and construction guidelines especially, indoor air quality IAQ, thermal quality, and lighting quality. Indoor air quality seeks to reduce volatile organic compounds, or VOX, and other air impurities such as microbial contaminants. Buildings rely on a properly designed ventilation system passively, naturally or mechanically powered, to provide adequate ventilation of cleaner air from outdoors or recirculated, filtered air as well as isolated operations kitchens, dry cleaners, etc. from other occupancies. During the design and construction process choosing construction materials and interior finish products with zero or low VOC emissions will improve IAQ. Most building materials and cleaning, maintenance products emit gases, some of them toxic, such as many VOX including formaldehyde. These gases can have a detrimental impact on occupants' health, comfort, and productivity. Avoiding these products will increase a building's IEQ. LEED, HQE and Green Star contain specifications on use of low-emitting interior. Draft LEED 2012 is about to expand the scope of the involved products. BREEAM limits formaldehyde emissions, no other VOX. Moss Certified Green is a registered trademark to delineate low VOC emitting products in the marketplace. The Moss Certified Green program ensures that any potentially hazardous chemicals released from manufactured products have been thoroughly tested and meet rigorous standards established by independent toxicologists to address recognized long term health concerns. These IAQ standards have been adopted by and incorporated into the following programs. 1. The United States Green Building Council USGBC in their LEED rating system. 2. The California Department of Public Health CDPH in their Section 01350 standards. 3. The Collaborative for High Performance Schools CHPS in their Best Practices Manual and 4. The Business and Institutional Furniture Manufacturers Association BIFMA, in their level sustainability standard, also important to indoor air quality is the control of moisture accumulation dampness, leading to mold growth and the presence of bacteria and viruses as well as dust mites and other organisms and microbiological concerns. Water intrusion through a building's envelope or water condensing on cold surfaces on the building's interior can enhance and sustain microbial growth. A well-insulated and tightly sealed envelope will reduce moisture problems but adequate ventilation is also necessary to eliminate moisture from sources indoors including human metabolic processes, cooking, bathing, cleaning, and other activities. Personal temperature and airflow control over the HVAC system coupled with a properly designed building envelope will also aid in increasing a building's thermal quality. Creating a high-performance luminous environment through the careful integration of daylight and electrical light sources will improve on the lighting quality and energy performance of a structure. Solid wood products, particularly flooring, are often specified in environments where occupants are known to have allergies to dust or other particulates. Wood itself is considered to be hypoallergenic and its smooth surfaces prevent the buildup of particles common in soft finishes like carpet. The Asthma and Allergy Foundation of America recommends hardwood, vinyl, linoleum tile or slate flooring instead of carpet. The use of wood products can also improve air quality by absorbing or releasing moisture in the air to moderate humidity. Interactions among all the indoor components and the occupants together form the processes that determine the indoor air quality. 
Extensive investigation of such processes is the subject of indoor air scientific research and is well documented in the journal Indoor Air. Topic operations and maintenance optimization No matter how sustainable a building may have been in its design and construction, it can only remain so if it is operated responsibly and maintained properly. Ensuring operations and maintenance o &M personnel are part of the project's planning and development process will help retain the green criteria designed at the onset of the project. Every aspect of green building is integrated into the O&M phase of a building's life. The addition of new green technologies also falls on the O&M staff. Although the goal of waste reduction may be applied during the design, construction and demolition phases of a building's life cycle, it is in the O&M phase that green practices such as recycling and air quality enhancement take place. O&M staff should aim to establish best practices in energy efficiency, resource conservation, ecologically sensitive products and other sustainable practices. Education of building operators and occupants is key to effective implementation of sustainable strategies in O&M services. Topic: Waste reduction. Green architecture also seeks to reduce waste of energy, water and materials used during construction. For example, in California nearly 60% of the state's waste comes from commercial buildings during the construction phase. One goal should be to reduce the amount of material going to landfills. Well-designed buildings also help reduce the amount of waste generated by the occupants as well, by providing on-site solutions such as compost bins to reduce matter going to landfills. To reduce the amount of wood that goes to landfill, Neutral Alliance a coalition of government, NGOs and the forest industry created the website Don'twastewood.com. The site includes a variety of resources for regulators, municipalities, developers, contractors, owner, operators and individuals, homeowners looking for information on wood recycling. When buildings reach the end of their useful life, they are typically demolished and hauled to landfills. Deconstruction is a method of harvesting what is commonly considered waste and reclaiming it into useful building material. Extending the useful life of a structure also reduces waste. Building materials such as wood that are light and easy to work with make renovations easier. To reduce the impact on wells or water treatment plants, several options exist. Greywater Wastewater from sources such as dishwashing or washing machines, can be used for subsurface irrigation, or if treated, for non-potable purposes, e.g., to flush toilets and wash cars. Rainwater collectors are used for similar purposes. Centralized wastewater treatment systems can be costly and use a lot of energy. An alternative to this process is converting waste and wastewater into fertilizer, which avoids these costs and shows other benefits. By collecting human waste at the source and running it to a semi-centralized biogas plant with other biological waste, liquid fertilizer can be produced. This concept was demonstrated by a settlement in Lübeck, Germany in the late 1990s. Practices like these provide soil with organic nutrients and create carbon sinks that remove carbon dioxide from the atmosphere, offsetting greenhouse gas emission. Producing artificial fertilizer is also more costly in energy than this process. Topic: Reduce impact onto electricity network. Electricity networks are built based on peak demand another name is peak load. 
Peak demand is measured in the units of watts W. It shows how fast electrical energy is consumed. Residential electricity is often charged on electrical energy kilowatt hour KWH. Green buildings or sustainable buildings are often capable of saving electrical energy but not necessarily reducing peak demand. When sustainable building features are designed, constructed and operated efficiently, peak demand can be reduced so that there is less desire for electricity network expansion and there is less impact onto carbon emission and climate change. These sustainable features can be good orientation, sufficient indoor thermal mass, good insulation, photovoltaic panels, thermal or electrical energy storage systems, smart building home energy management systems. Topic cost and payoff The most criticized issue about constructing environmentally friendly buildings is the price. Photovoltaics, new appliances, and modern technologies tend to cost more money. Most green buildings cost a premium of also, higher worker or student productivity can be factored into savings and cost deductions. Numerous studies have shown the measurable benefit of green building initiatives on worker productivity. In general it has been found that, there is a direct correlation between increased productivity and employees who love being in their work space, specifically, worker productivity can be significantly impacted by certain aspects of green building design such as improved lighting, reduction of pollutants, advanced ventilation systems and the use of non-toxic building materials. In The Business Case for Green Building, the U.S. Green Building Council gives another specific example of how commercial energy retrofits increase worker health and thus productivity. People in the U.S. spend about 90% of their time indoors. EPA studies indicate indoor levels of pollutants may be up to 10 times higher than outdoor levels. LEED certified buildings are designed to have healthier, cleaner indoor environmental quality, which means health benefits for occupants. Studies have shown over a 20 year life period, some green buildings have yielded $53 to $71 per square foot back on investment. Confirming the rentability of green building investments, further studies of the commercial real estate market have found that LEED and Energy Star certified buildings achieve significantly higher rents, sale prices and occupancy rates as well as lower capitalization rates potentially reflecting lower investment risk. Topic. Regulation and operation As a result of the increased interest in green building concepts and practices, a number of organizations have developed standards, codes and rating systems that let government regulators, building professionals and consumers embrace green building with confidence. In some cases, codes are written so local governments can adopt them as bylaws to reduce the local environmental impact of buildings. Green building rating systems such as BREEAM United Kingdom, LEED United States and Canada, DGNB Germany, CASBEE Japan, and Vertigche Spain, Griha India help consumers determine a structure's level of environmental performance. They award credits for optional building features that support green design in categories such as location and maintenance of building site, conservation of water, energy, and building materials, and occupant comfort and health. The number of credits generally determines the level of achievement. Green building codes and standards, such as the International Code Council's draft International Green Construction Code, are sets of rules created by standards development organizations that establish minimum requirements for elements of green building, such as materials or heating and cooling. 
Some of the major building environmental assessment tools currently in use include United States – International Green Construction Code IGCC. Topic. International Frameworks and Assessment Tools IPCC Fourth Assessment Report Climate Change 2007, the Fourth Assessment Report of the United Nations Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change IPCC, is the fourth in a series of such reports. The IPCC was established by the World Meteorological Organization WMO, and the United Nations Environment Programme UNEP, to assess scientific, technical and socio-economic information concerning climate change, its potential effects and options for adaptation and mitigation, UNEP and climate change, United Nations Environment Program UNEP works to facilitate the transition to low-carbon societies, support climate-proofing efforts, improve understanding of climate change science, and raise public awareness about this global challenge. GHG Indicator The Greenhouse Gas Indicator, UNEP Guidelines for Calculating Greenhouse Gas Emissions for Businesses and Noncommercial Organizations Agenda 21 Agenda 21 is a program run by the United Nations UN related to sustainable development. It is a comprehensive blueprint of action to be taken globally, nationally and locally by organizations of the UN, governments, and major groups in every area in which humans impact on the environment. The number 21 refers to the 21st century. FIDICs PSM The International Federation of Consulting Engineers FIDIC Project Sustainability Management Guidelines were created in order to assist project engineers and other stakeholders in setting sustainable development goals for their projects that are recognized and accepted by as being in the interests of society as a whole. The process is also intended to allow the alignment of project goals with local conditions and priorities and to assist those involved in managing projects to measure and verify their progress. The project sustainability management guidelines are structured with themes and sub-themes under the three main sustainability headings of social, environmental and economic. For each individual sub-theme a core project indicator is defined along with guidance as to the relevance of that issue in the context of an individual project. The Sustainability Reporting Framework provides guidance for organizations to use as the basis for disclosure about their sustainability performance, and also provides stakeholders a universally applicable, comparable framework in which to understand disclosed information. The reporting framework contains the core product of the sustainability reporting guidelines, as well as protocols and sector supplements. The guidelines are used as the basis for all reporting. They are the foundation upon which all other reporting guidance is based, and outline core content for reporting that is broadly relevant to all organizations regardless of size, sector, or location. The guidelines contain principles and guidance as well as standard disclosures, including indicators, to outline a disclosure framework that organizations can voluntarily, flexibly, and incrementally, adopt. Protocols underpin each indicator in the guidelines and include definitions for key terms in the indicator, compilation methodologies, intended scope of the indicator, and other technical references. Sector supplements respond to the limits of a one-size-fits-all approach. Sector supplements complement the use of the core guidelines by capturing the unique set of sustainability issues faced by different sectors such as mining, automotive, banking, public agencies and others. 
IPD Environment Code The IPD Environment Code was launched in February 2008. The code is intended as a good practice global standard for measuring the environmental performance of corporate buildings. Its aim is to accurately measure and manage the environmental impacts of corporate buildings and enable property executives to generate high-quality, comparable performance information about their buildings anywhere in the world. The code covers a wide range of building types from offices to airports and aims to inform and support the following creating an environmental strategy inputting to real estate strategy communicating a commitment to environmental improvement creating performance targets environmental improvement plans Performance assessment and measurement Life cycle assessments Acquisition and disposal of buildings Supplier management Information systems and data population Compliance with regulations Team and personal objective CPD estimate that it will take approximately three years to gather significant data to develop a robust set of baseline data that could be used across a typical corporate estate. ISO 21931 ISO TS 21931 2006 Sustainability in Building Construction Framework for Methods of Assessment for Environmental Performance of Construction Works Part 1, Buildings, is intended to provide a general framework for improving the quality and comparability of methods for assessing the environmental performance of buildings. It identifies and describes issues to be taken into account when using methods for the assessment of environmental performance for new or existing building properties in the design, construction, operation, refurbishment and deconstruction stages. It is not an assessment system in itself but is intended be used in conjunction with, and following the principles set out in, the ISO 14000 series of standards. Topic. See also Natural building First Ecohouse National Green Building Standard Topic. Green Building by Country <laughs> <laughs> General <laughs>